I'm going to show you how to do the problems from your um, absolute value equations and in inequalities review. Um, so we're going to start with the first one. This is number one on the review. And what we have is negative 4x is equal to 32. Now, the strategy we're going to use is going to be the same for all of these problems, where this negative 4x term, because it's an absolute value, can end up giving us 32 or negative 32. And so what we're going to do is we're going to write two equations because we're most likely going to have two answers here. The first equation we're going to write, we just drop the absolute value term and write the equation as is. The second equation we're going to write, because this negative 4x can end up being negative 32, because the absolute value of negative 32 is 32, we would write negative 4x is equal to negative 32. So we're just going to make the right side of the equation negative. And after that, we just solve for x. So I'm going to divide by negative 4 on both sides. And I end up getting x is equal to negative 8. Divide by negative 4 on both sides over here. And I end up getting x is equal to positive 8. So with this one, x is equal to negative 8 or x is equal to positive 8. Now I'll make a separate video showing how to quickly check this on your graphing calculator and post it along with this one. Okay, so this is gonna be our general strategy. On the left, we write an equation where you just drop the absolute value and, solve and write the equation as it is. On the right, we're going to drop the absolute value, but then we're gonna set our, term, our absolute value term equal to the negative of the right side of the equation. So let's try the next one. Now with this one, it's a little bit more complex, but we're gonna use the same strategy. The extra step you're gonna to have to take is that you want to isolate the absolute value term. And we're gonna do this just by doing some basic algebra. So because I want the absolute value to be by itself, I'm just gonna to try to move this negative five and this three over to the other side of the equation. I'll do that by adding five to both sides. So I end up getting 3 times the absolute value of 4x minus 1 is equal to 15. I'm not done yet because I want this absolute value isolated. I want it by itself. So we'll divide both sides by 3. These 3 cancel. And I end up getting absolute value of 4x minus 1 is equal to 5. Once you get to this point, our absolute value term is isolated. Uh, we're going to use the same strategy as above. So on the left, I'm going to write 4x minus 1 is equal to 5. So I'm just dropping the absolute value term and writing the equation as it is. And on the right, 4x minus 1 is equal to negative 5. And then it, again, it's as simple as solving for x. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So here, 4x is equal to 6. I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides, go down a little bit, and x is equal to 6 over 4, and if we simplify, that's 3 over 2. This is an acceptable answer. It's a fraction, but this is a number. 3 halves is a number. If you put it in your calculator, you're going to get 1.5, same thing. So you can leave it like this. Let's go over here. If I add 1 to both sides, 4x is equal to negative 4 divide by 4 on both sides, and x is equal to negative 1. So again, we get two answers, x is equal to 3 halves, or x is equal to negative 1. Both of these will satisfy this equation. All right? This one is, uh, again, looks a little bit different, but we're going to use the same strategy. Because the absolute value term is isolated, we can just start by dropping the absolute value and writing the equation as is. And then we're going to, again, do the same thing. So 3x plus 5 is equal to, now, we have to make the whole term on the right side negative. So what that would look like is if you put a negative in front of this whole term, 
it would look like this. And so if we just distribute that negative, we end up getting negative 5x minus 2. And once we've done that, we just solve for x. Okay, so there's a bunch of different ways we can do this. Uh, I'm just going to combine like terms. So if I subtract 5x on both sides, I end up getting negative 2x plus 5 is equal to 2. Subtract 5 on both sides, I end up getting negative 2x is equal to negative 3. Divide by 2 on both sides, and I end up getting x is 3 halves. Again, it's a fraction. Um, that's totally acceptable. All right, so over here, we're just going to solve for x. So I'll add 5x to both sides. I end up getting 8x plus 5 is equal to negative 2. Subtract 5 from both sides. And I end up getting 8x is equal to negative 7. Divide by 8 on both sides, and I get x is negative 7 eighths. Now, this is one we would, we would tell you this, but this will end up being an extraneous solution. If you plug in negative 7 eighths into 5x plus 2, you end up getting a negative number. And if you remember, an absolute value can't equal a negative number. So the actual true answer to this one is going to be 3 halves. Um, on a test, we will point out if, there, if you should check for an extraneous solution. Okay, this one is number 4. And this is an absolute value inequality. So these absolute value inequalities add one extra layer into what you need to do. The first thing you're going to write is the same as before. So you're just going to drop the absolute value and write the inequality as it is. The second thing you're going to have to write is drop the absolute value. But this time you need to flip the inequality and set this equal to the negative of whatever the term is on the right hand side. So here I flipped the inequality and I set to negative 8 instead of 8. After that, we just solve for x. So here I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So x is greater than or equal to 13. Add 5 to both sides, x is less than or equal to 3. Now, this has to be an or statement, and the reason I, I'll, I'll graph it first and you'll see why. So here I have x is greater than or equal to 13, so I'm going to have a filled in dot because we have an equal to, and x is less than or equal to 3. I'm sorry, negative 3. So because x is less than or equal to negative 3, I'm going to draw to the left of this. Because these are all the numbers smaller than negative 3, and including negative 3. The little trick is the tip of the arrow, as long as the, the letter, the variable, is on the left-hand side, the tip of the arrow here points to the direction that you should shade x is greater than or equal to 13. So that's going to be all the numbers bigger than 13 and including 13. So it's going to look like that. So we would say x is less than or equal to 13 or x is greater than or equal to, or, or sorry, x is greater than or equal to 13 and less than or equal to negative 3. Now, if we need to write this in interval notation, I have a whole video explaining how to do interval notation. So we'll start with the negative 3 term, and we start with the lower end. So this 
shading will go on forever, all the way until negative infinity. So I'm going to write parentheses, negative infinity, comma, and then I'm going to end at the upper term of the shading, which is negative 3. Because our number or, or our, our answer includes negative 3, I'm going to use a bracket. Remember, we always use parentheses with infinity. If, it, if the answer includes a number, we use a bracket. Now, let's do x is greater than or equal to 13. The lower end is 13. And the upper end, the shading goes all the way to infinity. So I'm going to write infinity here. Always do parentheses with infinity. And we're going to do a bracket because this answer includes 13. To join these two phrases in interval notation, we use that big U. So that's how you would write that answer in interval notation. All right, this is the last one in the review. Um, remember, we need to make sure we isolate our absolute value term. And so what I'm going to do to, in order to do that is just add 4 to both sides. And I end up getting absolute value of 3x is greater than 12. Now, after we do that, we can use the same strategy we've been using. So I'm going to get 3x is greater than 12. I'm just dropping the absolute value, writing the equation as is. And here, we have to do two things. 3x, I'm going to flip the inequality, and I'm going to have it negative 12. So flip the inequality, set it equal to the negative of whatever's opposite of the absolute value term. And then um, just solve for x. So we'll divide by 3 on both sides. And I get x is greater than 4. Divide by 3 on both sides. x is less than negative 4. So we have another or statement here. I'm going to have open circles because it's just x is greater than or less than, there's no equal to. And we'll put negative 4 and 4. x is greater than 4, so this is going to go on forever in the rightward direction. Remember, if you're stuck, as long as the variable's on the left, whatever way this is pointing, the tip of the arrow is pointing to the right so that we're going to shade to the right. Here we have x is less than negative 4, so we're going to shade to the left, and that goes on to infinity. So if I write this out, x is less than 4 or x is greater than, sorry, x is greater than 4. I always say this, x is greater than 4 or x is less than negative 4. And if we were to write that in interval notation, we'll start with x is less than negative 4. The bottom end, because this goes on forever, is negative infinity. Always use parentheses with our infinities. The upper end is negative 4. And we're going to use a parentheses because uh, uh, negative 4 is not included in the answer. And we're going to join that to here the lower end is 4. I'm using a parentheses because 4 is not included in the answer and it goes to infinity, which we always use parentheses. That's it.